Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. So I've been waiting a long time to put this video out. There's been a, some things happening in the background and talks with Hut 8, whose facility I toured a couple weeks back. I've been planning on putting an in-depth video together on Hut 8 and this company kind of holds a special place in my heart because it's local. It's from Alberta, where I've chosen to make a life build a family and build my empire. So when they reached out to me and offered to give me a tour of their facilities, I jumped on it. I rented a car and drove down to Medicine Hat. In just a moment, I'll share that tour with you and everything that I've learned. But just so that this video doesn't get too long, I decided to break this up into a three-part series most likely. And in this one, I'm just gonna share with you the actual tour and in the next couple of videos or installments, I'm going to go further into analyzing the company, sharing what makes it special and sets it apart from just about all the other miners out there. And in particular, I want to address the news that was actually just announced today, which really was groundbreaking and sent the stock surging far past any of the other stocks in this sector and for good reason. But without further ado, Please enjoy. So I left Edmonton early this morning, around 6 a.m. I've uh, been driving for a little over five hours with a couple of breaks here and there. Uh, and we're coming up on Hut 8 Mining Facility here in Medicine Hat, Alberta. The facility sits right amongst a few wind turbines, which you can hopefully see there. Not sure how well the uh, white balance works from inside the car. And Hut 8 facility is coming up here on the left. Right beside a power facility. The thing that's different about Hut 8 from many of the other miners is their facility is outdoors. The reason why they called it Hut 8 is Hut 8 is the hut that housed the Enigma machine that the Allied forces captured from the Germans during World War II. So I'm gonna go in and introduce myself and we'll be back. Okay, so we're at Hut 8 Mining Facility. This is Etienne's gonna be giving us a quick tour. Hi, I'm Etienne Snyman, Head of Power for Hut 8 Mining. So this is the outdoor mining facility, quite a bit different than what we might see expect at any other kind of facility. As far as I know, not too many other people doing this. Not in this scale. No. There are many a repurposed container out there, but as you'll see, these containers are not containers at all. They're, they're data center buildings built from the scratch up to be data centers. So the, the containers in their own right is sort of a machine, louvers and PLC controls, etc. And these things are uh, ready built, purpose built by, I think it's um, Bitfury? Is who you acquire the containers from? That's right. Well, these containers were bought from Bitferry, but they were manufactured here in Canada by, by two separate suppliers that we have here in Canada. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, as in specifications, it's sort of building on top of them. So is it, is it the, the core set? Because I can see you've got some other components shielding from weather and that sort of thing. Is that what you mean? Um, well, the, the containers were built to bed ferry specifications by by entities here in in Alberta. Um, oh, okay. But, but you're right, and, and the same suppliers who supplied that supplied the awnings to to uh, protect it from weather. Um, okay. As well. So Bit Fury is really just supplying the miners themselves. Yes. Okay. When we built the site, they supplied the containers with the miners. But in terms of what is proprietary to them, it was just the miners itself. Right. The containers are not so much anymore. Yes. Okay. Can we take a walk. Sure. And per unit is how much? Well, per per container is 1.25 megawatts. There's two containers per transformer, and these transformers are rated at 2.5 megawatts apiece. Okay. And your power is supplied from that facility right over there? It is, yeah. I'll give you a tour over here. I'll just show you some of the older miners versus the newer, newer miners that have seen some announcements from us. Over the last few months, um, we've been installing watts miners, uh, micro BT watts miners. Since the summer, I think around August is when the first ones went in. They're on the west side of the site here. Um, there was an announcement a week or two ago that we're buying another 5,400 watts miners. Um, so I'll show you the, the miners that we installed originally in 2018 versus the ones that we are uh, installing right now and frankly have running right now. Yeah, you can definitely pick up on that distinctive hum. <laughs> yeah, so that would be about... These are Watts Miner boxes, so they're about, uh, um, about 300 to 350 miners per container, so that would be about 700 fans. See the heat. I don't know if this is going to pick that up. So the wind basically runs straight through this corridor and removes all the heat pouring out from each of the units on either side. Each one of the containers have a cold side and a warm side. Um, so this would be a hot aisle. You can see the transformers are out of it. They're in the cold aisle. So these containers all blow their hot air into this and then it, it, uh, the wind evacuates the hot air out of here. And that's just so that this container on the left is not taking in the hot air from the container on the right. I've noticed it's quite windy here. Is it always like this? Mostly like that and the site was what, chosen for that purpose. That's why there's a wind farm less than a kilometer away from us. But it's to, to get rid of that, that air. Of course, cooling is an important factor when it comes to, to Bitcoin mining. And this site is sort of perfectly laid out for that. It's on the flat prairie, so you can see for miles. And that's just so that that wind, wind gets through here. So I don't know how much the wind's going to be blocking our audio, but we'll find out later on when we get to editing. So all this gravel here is uh, it's essentially substation gravel. It's to provide uh, electric isolation protection. Uh, it's a lot of power that's being used here, 67 megawatts, which at times is as much as the entire city of Medicine had to use this. So that's one of the, um, uh, you know, often criticism that Bitcoin mining gets is the power usage. Um, here in Alberta, a lot of it is coal, but as you said, you get some of yours from wind as well. That's right. Do you know what your power mix is? It's a, it's a mix of natural gas and then grid power. Where, where we are in the southern part of a province is where most of the, most of the wind power is generated. There's uh, approaching 2,000 megawatts of wind installed in southern Alberta. All the new wind farms are going in in this region as well. You are right that there's still some coal on the grid, though uh, significantly less than there was five years ago. And uh, the grid is going to be um, essentially well, not essentially, completely coal-free um, within the next nine years. Um, I know that was the plan. I wasn't sure if that was still going forward It's accelerated, that way. if anything. Oh, wow. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, some of the big coal operators have actually announced acceleration of their off coal plants. So where coal so probably generated yeah. 60-70% of the power five years ago, it's um, guesstimate right now would probably be in the 30%, 40%, just because natural gas is frankly more competitive than coal now. Mm -hmm. So the coal plants are the ones turning offline and the gas plants are running more. Yeah, and they're easier to, to stroke up and down when you need to. Coal takes a lot longer. Especially with, with the higher wind penetration coming in in the province. Yeah. Um, you, the, the gas plants are just better suited for that. And it's about half the GHGs compared and to... Uh, this facility that you guys are connected to, is that natural gas? That is a natural gas power plant, yes. I'll take you over there after and I can explain to you more in, in detail there. Okay, this is going to get loud. That's pretty hot. So you can see these miners look different. This is the this is the bit free machines. Okay. Quieter. They are quieter. Much quieter. It's a lower pitch sound from the from the miner. This is hot. <laughs> so there are 56 of these containers on site. So this is our service from the utility. You can scoot underneath here you can get a better view. So on the other side of this fence is the new the uh, power supply generating station. How much power does this thing put out? So this is a 42 megawatt GE LM6000 LM gas turbine. It's called an aeroderivative gas turbine because it's derived from essentially an airplane engine. Um, essentially the same engine as you would see on, on a 747. They, um, of course, when it comes to airplanes, they really push hard for efficiency and uh, they have repurposed the engine. It's not like this is a, a engine that used to be on an airplane, but it's, it's the same design that they use for power generation. So it's as efficient as a, as a gas turbine can get um, without getting into steam, uh, steam generation, etc. Uh, this power plant was commissioned in, I believe it was November 2017. And you can see there's a bit of space here between our fence line and that gas turbine. And uh, that's, that was in contemplation of another gas turbine being added, which the city or the utility has recently sanctioned. So by Q1, uh, 2022 we expect to see another gas turbine year essentially doubling the capacity of this power plant so our data center capacity or load year exceeds this this gas turbines capacity at the moment uh, the bulk or the the rest of the energy gets imported from from the grid so your connection into this facility comes straight through the fence yes you can see there's a cable bus, a cable bus that runs right here you can see it goes directly into their that's called an e-house, that's where the generator breakers, etc. This power comes to us. Coming to us never hits the grid, it never it, it doesn't even go through a transformer. So there's no transmission loss really. Which minimal. is nice. Yeah, minimal. So this is where our power comes in. You can see metering cubicles, uh, generator get separated into seven feeders and then goes to the switching cubes and then off to the transformers. And what voltage do the transformers they take in what voltage? So we take in at 13,800 volts. And then they're coming out at 240? At 480 and then you can do um, phase to, to ground gives you 277 which is what the miners operate at. Okay. Well, considering it's not even so much the price of these things, it's how hard it is to get them in the first place. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. That's why we're so excited about the, the recent announcement. We've seen many, uh, many people are buying miners for delivery later in the year. Some or even into, next year. Into next year. Uh, so we're excited that we're able to get 5,400 miners within you know, a few months. It's one of the remarkable things I've found is despite the, the sudden sharp rise in Bitcoin's price, 
the difficulty on the network hasn't gone up that much. And it's limited by ASIC suppliers. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of convenient. <laughs> well, that's that's the whole. That's my entire yes. investment thesis: is that the price can rise way faster than the difficulty rate can. Exactly. Just because they can only make these things so fast. And as you can see here, this is a this is a major project. Yeah, and it's not just so the miners because getting like setting something a facility up like this or in, in any capacity whether it be indoors or outdoors like that, it's it's a lot of work and it's not simply oh just get them and plug them in no the power requirements alone require an extensive amount of planning and infrastructure build out that doesn't happen that quickly no it doesn't you're right but so this this data center constitutes around one percent of the total network hash rate so you can imagine if you you know if you want to increase or for the for the network hash rate to increase by 10 or 20 percent you have to go build multiple of these data centers which like you say does not happen overnight we we were able to do this very quickly due to partly due to modern modular design as well as a very welcoming um, utility and local government and, and that still took us uh, about six months to go from initial contract to the first mining and about eight months to the entire data center until the entire data center was operational and that was extremely aggressive schedule well that's kind of the benefit of the bear markets because it gives you time while everyone else is, like you know, people people lose attention they go somewhere else and that gives you that time to actually build these things up so when the next cycle begins you're not scrambling you're it's, it's already done yeah it's just, exactly and so that, well, you guys were one of the first to build up to this scale um, the other ones are gonna eventually catch up but by the time they do you've already mined a significant amount of Bitcoin yeah and uh, as you can see we have about 3,000 Bitcoin on the balance sheet which is I'm ridiculous. excited to see how much if any you guys sold <laughs> sold yeah I, I, I can't comment but I, uh, <laughs> I figured as much <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's because uh, you when do you know when uh, at least when what the date is for uh, final quarter Q4 reporting? I don't know. No, that would be a Jimmy or a Janie or a Sue question. Um, but but you're right. Even like we have these data centers now, but but by having them and having them be well operated and well maintained still gives us the ability to very quickly expand because to, to put it in perspective these containers where we're standing right now are producing over 30 petahash per container the the other units that we are replacing um, the miners in they're closer to around 10 petahash so it's a three times increase without really doing much to the container itself in, in terms of retrofitting it for the new for the new miners so it's a very quick way for us to get additional hash rate online and per the recent announcement we're, we're able to get delivery of, of miners here within the next few months and to put them to work is going to be very quick as well we don't have to go build a site go buy racking go source so just replace the older ones with the newer ones yeah. and increase your hash rate even further without much increasing even your power consumption so exactly. just all it does is improve your margin Exactly. So going from 10 to 30 petahash here, that comes with no additional power consumption. Um, so that's all, all just gravy. And also another limitation when it comes to constructing sites like this is, so there's one thing is to actually build a site if you're doing it properly into you know electrical code and utility utility standards. Um, but a lot of the equipment here are, is long lead equipment in terms of the transformers, the breakers because this is you're dealing with 13,800 volts. So that's not something that you just pick off the shelf. No, it's, again, it's, it's, just, it's a lot of supply constraints yes. with just about every component in this. Exactly, and we have, you know, I, I kind of lost track of the number now because it keeps changing because we keep increasing it, but around 15,000 miners operating on site um, right now as we speak. And then there's another 42 megawatts just located up the road. A drum there we go inside mission control yeah so there you can see the SCADA system for drum up there um, 
uh, operators here can control that whole site and open and close breakers and transformers, ramp equipment up and down. Um, same with the middle screen, there's the medicine out site. Same level of control of all facilities. And uh, as you can see, by all the other monitors, security is obviously an important part of our business. Every and single container. Box. Every container has a camera in it. And then many of them have, can, have um, cameras outside of them as well. And like you said, keeping a close eye on the weather. Exactly. So that was hut eight. I spent the entire day there talking with the team that runs that facility and it was refreshing to say the least to be able to engage with fellow cryptocurrency and Bitcoin enthusiasts to actually be able to converse with people who understood this technology as good if not better than me. And I've kept in contact with some of them and as I mentioned I'm going to be continuing my coverage on this company in at least a couple more videos and also covering any future developments that they might announce because they are making some very impressive moves. In fact, I'm going to be looking to expand my holdings in this company in the near future. But that's all for this one. Now let's get back to Empire Building.